Twin TV Fantasy Football League podcast. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, alongside me, Joe Johnson, as always. And week four is over, and we've entered week five. And we've also included bye weeks. Uh, this is know. where it gets scary. Um, players are going to be sitting. Uh, you got to make arrangements. This is where you test the depth of your team. Um, but you might not have to worry about your team too much. Uh, sitting four and O <laughs> in the league, um, it's pretty wild. It you know we have a four and O team, and then unfortunately have an O and four team. Oh, brutal. Um, with a mash of everybody else in the middle. But how was your fantasy week, Joe? How are you feeling about the team? You know, on draft day, uh, I came away fairly co- – I mean, everyone comes away confident that, you know, they had the best draft. And I, I thought I had a decent draft, and I got a poor grade for it. But if you would have told me I'd go 4-0 and to start the season, I wouldn't have believed you. I didn't think I had uh, had it in me. But here we are, 4-0. Uh, pretty dominant win, and we'll go into the de- details in a little bit. Uh, I thought I was going to lead the entire league this week, but – uh, there were two, uh, two games on Monday and, uh, I ended up falling into third place shockingly. But, um, what I loved about this past weekend was the scoring. There's mm-hmm. a lot of scoring that's kind of been missing over the past few weeks with kickers leading the way. Yeah. Um, but there were, gosh, watching TV on Sunday, there were several quarterbacks, maybe five or six quarterbacks that threw for over 300 yards and multiple touchdowns. And Mm -hmm. that's what this league needs is a high scoring offense. So it was a a fun weekend, uh, lots of high scoring games and uh, which resulted in lots of points in fantasy. Yeah. And like you said, it was all kind of of came down to Monday night. A lot of games were decided by Monday night games. Uh, If you had a dolphin or a Titan, I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) Uh, Unless but you had if, defense. Yeah, but if you had um, anybody from the Seahawks and Lions, you most likely, you know, had an enjoyable night. Even if you lost, you probably had some scoring in the game, and it was probably a close matchup. Um, I know throughout all of our leagues, there was a lot of crazy last-second uh, scoring that led to, you know, very close finishes. Luckily, I didn't really have to worry about any of those, but um, it, it was a fun, fun weekend of fantasy for sure. It was. Um, so let's get right into those matchups and to kick it off kind of surprisingly. And again, this was because of that, um, that Monday night game, Monday night game Yeah, that Ian put up 152 points to lead the week yep. and led the week. And if you can give them some stats, cause I'm trying to get the computer back up on the screen. So Kenneth Walker, who had been battling injury the past couple of weeks, uh, came back and was uh, looked absolutely fantastic, uh, which is so odd because the Lions have been very, very good against the run. But on Monday night, yeah, he had what three touchdowns? I three believe? touchdowns, thirty-three points. Yeah. Uh, so he definitely led the way, and uh, yeah, so that was. His scoring leader, Um, he also, in the Monday same Monday night game, he had St. Brown with the Lions score 20 points, and he's the one who threw a touchdown to Jerry Goff. Who saw that coming? That was the old Philly special. It's unfortunate it doesn't come up on the fantasy stat sheet. Um, He got points for it, but it doesn't show under the stats category, Yeah, which is sad. And, uh, and then, uh, Reed was back. Uh, he kind of started off strong at the beginning of the season, if I remember correctly. And, yeah. and, uh, boy, with love coming back, what a difference he yeah. makes. Well, he, he started out rusty, the yeah. Packers quarterback, but my God, he started putting up points in the uh, second half. Yeah. What did he have? He had three interceptions and I think they were all in the first half Yeah, and he had four touchdowns, most of them in the second half. So yeah, Green Bay might. Might have gotten their stride back, and a lot of people are starting to say that the NFC North might be the best best division in football. It's going to be competitive. I mean, look what the Vikings are doing. Look what yeah. the, the Lions look so dominant, mm-hmm. and it's kind of exciting to think that in a couple of weeks the Lions are going to be facing the Vikings. That yeah. will be the game of the week. That's yeah, which fun. is wild because you know, at the beginning of the season, everybody would have thought, ah, the Vikings they're they're going to be no good. At first, they had a rookie quarterback, and people were already concerned about them having a rookie quarterback what are they going to do and then you get 
news that he's going to be out for the season, so they go to Sam Darnold. And Sam Darnold's been around for a while, so you think, how good can he be? But it seems to be that when you give the quarterback somebody like Justin Jefferson and Aaron Jones has been phenomenal for them, yeah. Jordan Addison coming back, TJ Hawkinson still on his way back from IR. Like When you just give somebody weapons, the quarterback doesn't really seem to matter all that much. And, yeah. and we're seeing that around the league a little bit. Which is kind of surprising. So yeah, and and you, the quarterback does matter to the extent where we've seen some teams that have like rookie quarterbacks or young quarterbacks who are failing, and then they they you know pull out a veteran quarterback who's been mm-hmm. bagging groceries or something and put him on the field, and they throw for three touchdowns and three hundred yards. So yeah, um, the t- a quarterback can really make a huge difference in a game. Right, um, and then on the other side of the ball, uh. Becky's team kind of just, they did good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, 128 points isn't anything no. to sneeze at. But she just didn't have anybody that blew up. Yeah. Like Ian had Ken Walker, who had 33, Jaden Reed, 27. Becky just had everybody under 20, but basically over 10, 12 points. Yeah. Um, and Her leader was who? Connor, uh, yeah. Arizona running back, uh, 18 points. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But like you said, nothing really that stood out. Uh, there's, he, we were talking about Love. He was on the bench. Uh, mm-hmm. He outscored Hurts. Uh, I don't know if that would have made much of a difference. Right. Uh, Deontay Johnson for Carolina had 21 points, so she did leave some points on the bench. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't think it was enough. Um, so it was just Maybe. kind of an unfortunate. Uh, matchup, I would say, going up against, you know, the highest scorer is always tough during the week. Um, but, yeah, Jalen Hurts has been disappointing. I have him in our other league. Um, I believe I looked at it today. He has six touchdowns uh, to seven turnovers, whether it be interceptions wow. or fumbles. Um, I do think part of that is due to A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith still being hurt. Uh, they do get their bye week, so he, they should be back, hopefully, um, after the bye week, and maybe Philly can get back on a roll. But right now, he's struggling. So if Jordan Love keeps doing what he's doing, I don't know, Becky might have another quarterback controversy again this year that she has to deal with. So. Yeah. Now, I know we're going to look ahead to uh, week five in a little bit, but I, um, I'm i going to be facing Ian's team uh, in week five, and he's already in trouble because he has one quarterback on his roster, mm. uh, Herbert, uh, who is on a bye uh, in week five. So he's going to have to hit the waiver wire. Well, he has Anthony Richardson. and Oh, there he is. Nobody, right, I didn't see that one. Nobody but. knows what – he might not play, though. There, There yeah, is a yeah. chance. Um, that's up in the air. But he probably will still have to somewhat look at the waiver wire just in case yeah. of that situation. Yep. And so. I always think about going over and just picking up a bunch of quarterbacks and dropping them so he can't get them. <laughs> that, that would, would be, be evil. The thing you could do. <laughs> um, all right. Next up is uh, my matchup. And unfortunately, I'm on the wrong side of it. Mm. Uh, Marie had a big blow up week again. She uh, scored 148 points. I had 129. So also, you know, nothing to scoff at, but I didn't get anything amazing going on. Uh, Marie's team was definitely carried by Derrick Henry, who wow, what a performance before that game. I think we were about even and we both had um, two players left or something like that. I believe I had Andrews and Gibbs. She had Henry and Metcalf. So I thought, OK, maybe there's a chance. And then Henry just exploded. Yeah. And when she went up by 40 and Mark Andrews still at zero <laughs> and Gibbs now has to outscore Metcalf by 40 or whatever, I knew it was over. Yeah, you know, I was texting you uh, during that game when uh, Henry took that handoff and hit the hole and was just outrunning defenders to the yeah. end zone. It was terrifying. And mm-hmm. I saw an angle where somebody had a camera in the end zone with Henry coming at him. And to see someone that big, that fast, mm-hmm. uh, the guy is a pure athlete. Yeah, they and, said, uh, I-, I believe he, yeah. he ran the fa- the third fastest time as a ball carrier on the NFL season so far. And he, you know, what's impressive about that is it didn't look like he was going to let up as he entered the end zone. Like you Mm -hmm. see a lot of guys kind of take their foot off the gas as they cross the goal line. He just charged hard into the end zone. I, I, 
thought he was just going to go into the tunnel and keep going. Yeah, uh, it was oh, such an impressive performance by him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, C.D. Lamb kind of came back uh, in gear and had a good Thursday night game, twenty three points. D.K. Metcalf has just been super solid all season. He did miss out on a touchdown. He fell just a yard short. Ugh. So that's kind of a, not really a bad beat because she won. But he also could have gotten a two-point conversion that they said wasn't good. But when you looked at the replay, it probably was good. Um, Travis Kelsey, maybe he's back because, uh, unfortunately, Rasheed Rice, who we'll talk about later, is uh, looking like uh, they don't know yet. But I think he's going to be out for the season. Yeah, yeah, nothing official has been stated yet, so uh, we'll have to speculate. But uh, Kelsey, you know, Rice has been taking uh, opportunities away from Kelsey. So mm -hmm. without Rice, Kelsey will probably get those opportunities back, and yeah. uh, we'll see. But, yeah, this was his, uh, obviously his best game of the season. The other funny one was uh, Young Way Koo, the kicker for Atlanta we with a game have winner. We a podcast without talking about a kicker. No, and he put up 20 points. With a 53-yard field goal, I think, or something, to win the game for yeah. Atlanta. Um, and the funny thing was, uh, Marie and I were sitting next to each other on the couch watching a couple games on Red Zone. And um, she was like, oh, man, Koo's got like 20 points. I think I'm going to beat you in ONTV. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that stinks. But then I, I started thinking a little bit more, and I said, because we're facing off each other in ESPN, I said, hmm. Oh, wait, he's my ESPN kicker. So, <laughs> so she <you> scored <laughs> 20 points on me. I scored 20 points on her on the other league. So. Did you get the win in ESPN? I did, actually. Ah, so you so, split it. So yeah. no, no one was necessarily sleeping on the couch. No, then. unfortunately, it was a split. So no complete bra bragging rights, but um, it was fun. Both of our quarterbacks struggled. Now, the funny thing is you, you look at our quarterbacks, and you have Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, probably the best two quarterbacks in the league um, NFL-wise. But for fantasy this week, and – Potentially going forward, Patrick Mahomes has been not good. Yeah. And that's almost two years of fantasy. Well, a year and a half-ish. Yeah. That we've seen him just not produce for fantasy football. Yeah. They're they're winning games, but he's just not putting up uh, the numbers a fantasy owner would like. And Allen, you know, one of the reasons I, I don't draft Allen season after season is because of the performance that you got from him this past week. Like, you know, what was it, week one or whatever, when he had – four total yeah. touchdowns or something, and you'll get really, really big games from him, but then he'll have multiple turnovers. And, boy, did Buffalo just look lost against uh, Baltimore. It was, yeah, it was shocking. It was weird after just before they had blown out the team previous, the Jacks, Jaguars. That's who they played. And, uh, yeah, they just they struggled against Baltimore. Baltimore always seems to, to step up when they're in a playoff-like atmosphere. Um, so that is unfortunate. Um, Malik Neighbors. He's been amazing. Um, he's he has. A, a a rookie there. of the year, possibly. Yeah, definitely. Um, I had to play T. Higgins this week with all the injuries that I've had at the wide receiver position, but he did solid. This is one I, I got to figure out. Bijan? We thought Bijan was going to have the big season after, you know, the craziness of last year and them splitting time with Algier. And yeah. I'm hoping he had a little bit of a shoulder injury going into this game. I'm hoping maybe they limited um, him on that. But Tyler Algier still looks really good. Yeah. And they're splitting touches, and it's like, did we overhype Bijan Robinson? And you can say that about I, – I think that's a bigger topic to talk about is, like, a lot of these first-round picks are just not working out. Bijan Robinson splitting time. Reese Hall is splitting time. Obviously, there's injury issues with Christian McCaffrey, Tyreek Hill – having quarterback issues, like you can go up up and down the list. There's just like so many problems. Um, and I don't I don't know what to do about it. Like it's just terrifying that all these top picks are just not really working out so far. Yeah. Yeah. I you know, I wouldn't be too quick to give up on them just yet. It seems like that the Falcons offense is kind of gelling a little bit. Cousins is sort of finding his footing so obviously you're not going to bench him. Yeah. Um, you know, is he a trade candidate? Possibly. Mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe he'll do better for someone else. But yeah, I, I wouldn't be quite ready to give up on him yet. As you watch the uh, Falcons' offense gel. Yeah, I don't know if I'm worried about it. I just, I don't. It's just concerning, I guess, in a way, 
and it's disheartening, perhaps. Now, there's another player on your roster who <laughs> you got to be like, yeah. Do you cut the court? Do you cut him loose? Do you flat uh, out drop it Mark is, Andrews? It is a shame, and I, I said it at the beginning of the year. This is the one player that I drafted in all three of my leagues. Yeah. And he happens to be the biggest fantasy disappointment of the season. Yeah. And I am at a big crossroads <coughs> of what to do because the potential is still there. We've seen what Mark Andrews can do. And I think the conclusion that I've made is at least in the ONTV league, he's going to be dropped. In this kind of league, there's too many other options that I can go to. And I think it's just peace of mind at this point to just get him off the roster and not worry about it. Yeah. It's shocking because the, the Ravens can put points up at will. Yeah. And, you know, you could say, well, maybe there's something wrong with Andrews. That's not the case because he was only targeted once. Yeah. It's not like he's dropping balls or, you know, not getting any yardage. He's not getting opportunities. Yeah. And you got to ask why, why is potentially one of the best tight ends to play this game, not even having the quarterback look his way. Yeah. That's a head scratcher. For well, me. the disappointing thing, at least for fantasy owners is part of it is the guy that I played against Derrick Henry. When you have a team that has Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson, teams just can't defend the run. Yeah. And then what else they did was they would use justice Hill out of the backfield as kind of a decoy and they would dump it down to him. He had six catches for 76 yards, Yeah, which was, he led the team in receiving. <laughs> Meanwhile, you got Mark Andrews and Zay flowers who did basically nothing in the entire game. Oh, so it's gotta be frustrating. It, it's and and that's what I've said about the Ravens in the past. Like I, even when I've drafted Lamar Jackson, like they're just a frustrating fantasy team. They're a great, great NFL team. One of my favorites, but for fantasy, it's just so hard to figure out how they're going to win. And like this game, they blew out the Buffalo. So it's like they're going to run the whole time. But even when they've been down this year, they haven't really thrown it to Andrews. So I think in this league, I'm going to drop him. ESPN, I'll have to see what the waiver wires like. And then in our big league, I was really close to dropping him. And I just, I'm scared that if I drop him, that he's going to go off. Even though <laughs> I have Kelsey in that league. I would rather hold on to Andrews and just see if they can get somewhere while I still have Kelsey on the team and then go from there. It's it's so shocking to me that just a few years ago in, in the other league that I'm in when I won the whole kit and caboodle, uh, Andrews was the number one tight end on the season. He helped lead me to a championship, mm -hmm. and now he's irrelevant. And yeah. it's it's shocking that that can happen so quickly. Yep. They, uh, they now say he's one of the best blocking tight ends in the league. <laughs> Um, I also got production out of Aaron Jones and Brian Thomas Jr., but again, just wasn't enough. And I didn't really leave anything on the bench. Um, Jaden Daniels, you could say, but I'm not going to start Jaden Daniels over Josh Allen. Not just yet. There yeah. is a chance that, that could change going forward. Um, but right now, it's not very likely. I the caught a little bit of the Tennessee game when I got home from work, and Pollard was looking kind of solid, like yeah. he was starting to find his footing. Yeah, it took him a little bit, but in the second half, he really took over, and he had some good some good big runs. Um, the other crazy thing is Marie left a lot of points on her bench. Mm. Um, Michael Pittman Jr. finally had a good game. I think in, in turn, due to Joe Flacco being uh, put into the game, DeAndre Swift had the biggest surprise for me of the weekend yeah. uh, with all the catches and production he had. You know, I've been seeing, you know, experts on, on videos on TikTok and stuff like that saying that Swift is shaping up to be one of the biggest busts of the season and that you should just flat out drop him. Yeah. And then he responds with an almost 30-point game. Don't yeah. give up on Swift just yet. That's almost how it always happens, um, especially with, like, starting running backs. You just never know. And Chicago's still figuring things out with their rookie quarterback and all that. So I I would agree his talent is still there. I don't think he's great, but he's good enough that, you know, anytime you have a starting running back in, in fantasy, you don't want to give up on them too soon. Yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of quietly cheering him on because he is a former Lion, correct? I'm not. <laughs> you, you don't like former Lions, do you? Uh, not ones that, like, <laughs> I don't know. There, there's, like, this weird thing where so many people were – mad when they got rid of DeAndre Swift and I didn't really mind it. He was constantly injured and it's not that he didn't produce for the team, but it's just like he 
wasn't able to show up because he was hurt all the time. Yeah. And so, you know, the way that things have gone, I just, I don't really care for him anymore, yeah. I guess. But, and plus he plays for the Bears now. So that's like that's the true. worst division, right? The worst possibility. Yeah. Um, our next matchup is your matchup. And to get to 4 0, you beat Tracy's team, who was playing pretty good. And unfortunately, <coughs> she lost a key member of her team. Uh, during this game, which 24 points, that would have been another big week for Rice, but he is capable of it, so oh, yeah. it would have been much closer of a matchup uh, had he played. But it's, um, it's luckily, heartbreaking when you start a player who gets injured early and get a yeah. big zero. That's there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah, and uh, especially when it's your own quarterback that takes you <laughs> takes you out. Yeah, I can't watch that replay for a number of reasons. Yeah, but, it's uh, bad. Yeah. Yeah. So they they got a report yesterday that they said they need further evaluation so they don't know the extent of the injury. Yeah. Must mean it's swelling a lot. So they said they won't know until next week. Oh jeez. of yeah. what actually happened. Um but I don't know if that's good or bad to me. That just means it's swollen and they can't see anything. Maybe it's not as bad, but even if it's, you know, a partial tear or MCL or something like he's going to be out for weeks. Yeah. And uh, my worst fear is that it's an ACL and he'll be done for the season. Yeah. Um, talk, us, talk to us about your team. How are they doing? So, uh, Kyron Williams, another solid game uh, back to back weeks. Um, he's just been fantastic for me. Uh, really glad I, I picked him up uh, as a running back. Uh, Diggs had a touchdown this week. Again, I've mentioned this last week that. Uh, he was a pretty late round addition for me and he's been very, very consistent scoring a touchdown. And, uh, he's, I have no doubt to just leave him in my roster until further notice. He's been great. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hubbard, who I picked up off of waivers a week or so ago, he performed 11 points over his prediction scoring 22 points, including a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, and he's one of my flex players. So yeah. He's been um, my my DFS darling lately is just the Carolina Panthers because they've been so cheap. And I think that's why his projection was so low that people thought that Car it's still Carolina, even though they only had one win with Andy Dalton coming back. But Cincinnati's defense has shown that they do not defend anybody. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, pleasant surprise uh, was San Francisco's defense, 22 points. Uh, I believe yeah. they had a defensive touchdown. Didn't yeah, they, they did. Um, the biggest disappointment on my roster, we're four weeks into the season, heading into week five. My biggest bust is, uh, Ayuk, uh, with the Niners. The last two weeks, he had really solid matchups. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jennings, uh, got all the benefit two weeks ago and he did nothing with the matchup against new England this past week. I'm done with IU. Uh, I traded him in another league. Uh, yeah. In this league, I'm going to bench him. And uh, after seeing Jordan Edison walk onto the field and dominate uh, on a really good Vikings team, Addison is going to take his place on my starting lineup. Uh, I'm done with IU. Mm. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on IU? I mean, he gets that uh, big fat contract and yeah. you know he sat out most of the preseason and and you know you can understand him struggling in week one week two but after four weeks he can't crack 10 points yeah and I don't know if it's you know part of that and then you know there's been some stuff that said that he's kind of been weird um at practice and things like that so maybe there's you know a headspace issue I don't know um but I, I also think that just the way that Brock Purdy has developed as a passer is he spreads the ball out a lot. Yeah. And he's become so efficient with his passing that he's just going to find the open guy. And maybe it's not always going to be Ayuk. I think the problem was, too, that last year Ayuk was, I don't know the numbers, but he was like an all-time efficient player of like, he had only like 70 or 80 catches but he had so many touchdowns, so many big yard plays that that really saved him. And it, maybe that skewed our perception of Ayuk. Yeah. And unfortunately, the 49ers paid into it. And now he's stuck with them. And I'm not saying he's a bad player by any means. But again, when you have a team that has so much talent, and we've seen Juwan Jennings step up each and every season, it feels like. And now with yeah. McCaffrey being gone, 
Kittle and Debo gone for a while, he was able to showcase himself and develop a little bit of chemistry uh, with Purdy as well. And and again, maybe it's defenses too. Maybe defenses are, you know, like, oh, Ayuk's the only guy here. I haven't watched a ton of close things on the 49ers, but maybe people are like, oh, it's Juwan Jennings. Do we really need to watch out for him? Yeah. And then he blows up. And then, Well, you mentioned uh, Debo. You know, he missed a game with injury. He comes back, and he scores 10 points. Like, yeah. he outscored IU coming coming in off yeah. an injury. Like, so I have Debo on my bench, who I mm-hmm. ought to draft it against my will. <laughs> um, but I'm going to start Debo over IU until mm. I see something. But uh, I'm ready to just cut ties with IU. But yeah. um, other than that, I left a little bit of points on my bench. Uh, I picked up Darnold and Addison off of uh, waivers, and uh, they combined for a total of 42 points, mm-hmm. uh, outscoring Purdy and Ayuk. I don't know if I'm going to start Darnold, Darnold next week because they're traveling to London and they're going to be facing the Jets. Yeah, and so there's there's some you know cause for concern there. I don't know, mm-hmm. so I might leave Purdy in, um, but I'm definitely benching IU. So uh, not a ton of points on the bench. No, I just have to bring it up because I brought it up last week, and now this is two weeks in a row, and this week was even worse. Yes, yes. How do you feel about Brees Hall? Um, boy, this past game really <laughs> made me nervous. Now there's you would think in a bad weather game that, you know, they would just run, run, run the ball. Mm-hmm. And uh uh Rogers in the post game press conference blamed himself, said that he wasn't good, he had bad passes. So there was weather, there was just bad play by the quarterback. So I'm not gonna panic over this most recent performance. It was just kind of a sloppy, ugly game. Uh, I'm I'm not ready to cut ties with Brees Hall just yeah. yet, even though uh, what's the other guy's name? The Braylon uh, Allen. Uh, Allen, you know he's he's poached a couple of touchdowns over the past couple of weeks, but I think they make a good one-two tandem. So I'm mm-hmm. not ready to cut ties with him yeah. yet. Now, if someone were to offer me a trade <laughs> with a a decent you know running back in return, I would definitely consider it. But yeah, uh, I'm I'm not ready to give up on him yet. Yeah, I'm just curious. Um, it's, it's an interesting situation, but I also do think the other thing that's kind of surprising is I think Denver's defense is actually really good. Mm -hmm. Um, their offense is kind of pitiful, but their defense seems to hold them in game. So yeah, that might be part of it as well. Um, on the other side, Tracy had Joe Burrow, who had a pretty solid game, would have expected a little more against Carolina's defense. They're still not very good on defense. Um, but Jamar Chase got his touchdown, um, only had three catches, but. 85 yards and that touchdown. One was a super long touchdown. Yeah. And it was an amazing catch where it looked like he was going to get tackled and mm-hmm. broke tackles and then streaked down the sideline. It was one of the one of the highlights of the season so far. When when we look at year-end highlights, that touchdown has to be there. That was spectacular. Yeah. Um, Kamara continues to be the best running back in the league so far uh, yeah. for fantasy. Brian Robinson, very big surprise. He's had a really nice season so far. I think – just Washington in general being elevated by Jaden Daniels is just helping a lot of players on that team. Um, Sam Laporta. Back. We, we back saw him there. back last night. Um, looked pretty good, but again, the Lions just might be one of those teams. Like, their pass catchers, they just have so many weapons. Yeah. Um, you know, might not know who's going to get it each night, and so far it hasn't been Laporta necessarily. And then Justin Jefferson, he just continues to be the best wide receiver in the league. In my he opinion. had another – I don't know that, that – Catch that he had in the end zone. I don't know how much of that was him and how much of that was was uh, Darnold, but he like yeah hit, hit him in the chest. He was covered really well, and that ball just stuck to his chest. <laughs> yeah. and he was like, "Oh, look what I got!" Yeah, and then he put his other hand around <laughs> it, and it was, so it was kind of a one-handed was, chest catch. That was amazing. And you know, I think back to draft day when uh, Tracy had those back-to-back uh, eighth, uh, yeah, eighth and ninth pick. And she got Chase and Jefferson in back-to-back picks. And uh, they combined in week four for, what, 37, 38 points. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, they continue to produce for uh, for her. Yeah. Unfortunately, like we said, she's going to have to find a replacement for Rice. Um, and then she also got kind of the sting that I did with the Baltimore receivers. Uh, Zay Flowers had one catch for 10 yards, um, which is disappointing. Mm-hmm. Um, not for me. She didn't really leave a much on the bench. 
technically Chase Brown, but I wouldn't have started him. Uh, maybe Chris Olave over Zay Flowers right? Um, in the good matchup for New Orleans. You want to get a but, piece of that uh, Saints offense. I mean, they had a down week last week, I think it was. But, yeah. you know, any any of those Saints receivers could potentially blow up. So right. I personally would jump on that Saints bandwagon. Yeah. So we'll see what she does there. Um, but, yeah, crazy that you are 4-0 now. 4-0. Who would have thunk that? <sighs> And now we have to move on to the <laughs> other side of that 4-0. Oh, Sammy. Sammy is 0-4. He lost to Malik, who is now 3-1, and actually. Yeah. And this matchup came down to last night, I believe. Um, he had HN Oh, yeah. Night. Because, so this is what happened. So... Malik had Jamison Williams and Tyreek Hill, and Sammy had Achan and um, yeah, Miami's defense. defense. Yep. So, like I said, if you had a Miami player or a Titans player, I'm sorry. And Malik had Tyreek Hill, but he did have one player in the Detroit Seattle game. And up until Jamal, uh, Jamison Williams' 70 yard touchdown <laughs> catch, I believe Sammy was up by like one point. Hmm. And so he had a chance, and Jamison Williams squashed it. And it's unfortunate. So now Sammy goes 0-2, or 0-4, and 4 0-4, yeah. Um, so he didn't get anything again from his wide receivers. I've said it throughout the season already. His wide receiver room is abysmal. And this week, James Cook, who he hadn't played basically all season, who's been having a great season, he finally put James Cook in and <laughs> gave him a dud. <laughs> and to me, that's where I start to feel bad for Sammy because it's just how the cookie crumbles. Same with A-Chan. He's also struggled with Tua being out. Um, Jonathan Taylor's been good, but he got banged up in this game. I don't know if he's going to be back. Um, Dallas Goddard had another good game without Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. But when they come back, he's I mean, he's going to be on bye this week, so Sammy's got to fill in for that. And then he might not be used as much when those guys come back. Ah, uh, it's it's a mess. He does have Jordan Mason, who's been really good. Yeah. But um I, I don't know I don't know where Sammy goes. I know he tried to make a lot of trades um this past week or so. He's he's hit the waiver wire like a champ. He's yeah. dropped guys, picked I mean, he's working on his team. He's working really hard to try yeah. and fix it, but he just you know, when it comes to fantasy football, there's a lot of luck involved too. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a lot of his guys uh, just, you know, Odunze, who, who people have been really high on lately, mm -hmm. two points. Yeah. That's brutal. And then, of course, like I said, A.J. Brown is still hurt. So maybe he gets him back and he'll do a little bit better. Um, Josh Jacobs has been kind of inconsistent. Maybe he also gets going now with Jordan Love, um, making defenses have to be more careful. Um, maybe that opens things up for Jacobs, but it's hard to say. Y you never know. But mm -hmm. hopefully Sammy can get something rolling soon. Uh, on the other side, Lamar Jackson just Solid having a great game. season. Um, like I said, Jamison Williams finally got a big touchdown again. Tyreek Hill. Boy, uh, Miami. I don't know Jeez, what to do. What is happening there? It's you ugly. Know, we were talking earlier about what a difference a quarterback makes. Uh, since they lost their starting quarterback, Miami can't put points up on the board. They're kicking field yeah. goals. It's it's really shocking mm -hmm. to see what's happening with that team. And if they don't do something quick, their season's over. And I think the, the, the weirdest thing to me, and I don't know if people have the same sentiment, but to me, I don't think Tua is that level of quarterback to where he elevates this offense so much that – I can't understand how they don't get production out of Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill when he's out of the game. <laughs> I know. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, they even tried to run the ball with Tyreek Hill. He was in the backfield a few times, and they just couldn't do anything. Yeah. And I, to me, it just I don't, I don't get it. And, you know, maybe I'm just discrediting Tua too much, but their offense just plays completely different without him. And I yeah. don't know if it's a coaching thing or what it is, but it's, yeah. it's wild. What because, are your thoughts? Do you think they're going to bring in a veteran uh, backup? or what? I don't know. This is their third quarterback at this yeah. point that they played. And I thought Tyler Huntley was going to come in and be a little better. 
and he just it looked the same most most yeah. of the same he he ran a little bit more so i guess that added something but yeah I, they have to decide what they're going to do like are they just going to tank the season which i don't think you can do with the way that you're paying Tyreek Hill there's people are starting to talk about rumors of Kansas City should, should go ask Miami for Tyreek Hill back <laughs> that would be crazy but i'm not saying it wouldn't happen yeah. but the dolphins ha- kind of have are in a crossroads they have to decide like We've basically gone all in the last couple of years. Are we going to still commit to the playoffs this year? Or are we going to go into a, a tank mode yeah. and start to figure things out? Now, in one of the leagues, uh, you grabbed Tennessee's defense. I grabbed Tennessee's defense in a different league. Uh, it, isn't that shocking to say that that's what Miami has become? Is you're like, let's find a defense that's <laughs> yeah. going up against Miami. And they yeah. Tennessee produced. They, mm-hmm. they produced double-digit points. Yeah, and, and in our big league, I was going against Tyreek Hill, and so going into that game, I was still nervous of, like, regular Tyreek Hill numbers. But then as soon as the game started and I could see how the offense was going, I was like, yeah. ah, I got it in the bag. Yeah, DK Metcalf just get a couple catches, I'm good. But, yeah, it, it's sad because, you know, we know how explosive this offense is when they're playing at their potential, but it's just ugly right now. Yeah. Um, Kittle, uh, Kittle had a spectacular touchdown grab. It was yeah. good to see him back. Mm-hmm. Um, even though he, he has the questionable tag on him, but, uh, he, he had a great grab. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to talk about Nico Collins with, Man. uh, he, when, if he's plays like he did this past weekend, Houston can be unstoppable. I mean, he's defied uh, all odds to me. He's, yeah. He came out of Michigan and he was a good receiver out of Michigan, but he was, I can't remember if he was a fourth round pick or something like that. I'd have to ask Malik, but he's been incredible the last two years. And I thought, you know, maybe last year was kind of a flash in the pan. And then again, with the way that they got digs in the off season, I thought, well, maybe they don't think Nico can be the number one guy, but no, they just bolstered their offense and he's been incredible. I, I looked into some stuff and he has like some of the, the best like separation rates in the league and like just, catching ability and they target him a ton in the end zone which is exactly what exactly what you want you want to get touchdowns and he's he's had an incredible season he's he's gonna be a first round pick next year i think if he continues on this pace and when you look at you know if you were to point to one thing so malik uh beat sammy by 16 points Mm -hmm. so when you look at that 33 points put up by nico when you use the term game winner, yeah. uh, Nico can be a game winner. He's he's uh, He was incredible. Yeah, and it's been fun to watch. And then he also got 18 points out of Terry McLaurin. He's been coming on strong. People were down on him the first couple of weeks. And yeah. He's uh, he's answered. Yeah, Jaden Daniels is slowly starting to, to throw the ball a little bit more. Um, and they're just they're getting on to their connection. And, yeah, that's back-to-back games where they've they've connected, I believe, for a touchdown. And uh, they've looked good ever since. And let's just on his bench, let's mention the B in your bonnet, the uh, <laughs> Taysom Hill. Yeah. Uh, two touchdowns, right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Who just, rattled his cage? 24 rushing yards, <laughs> but two touchdowns. That's the, the classic Taysom Hill. If, if you've been playing fantasy football for a while, I think he's been the most annoying fantasy player of all time for me just because of that reason. Um, he'll have these random games and then he'll go away for a couple weeks. Yeah. And then you'll see him in the next game after that. He'll throw like a passing touchdown, get a rushing touchdown, maybe catch a passing touchdown. You know, like, uh, all every, sorts of stuff. Every league I'm in, somebody has Taysom Hill on their roster, but I don't think I've, or yeah, Taysom Hill. And I don't think I've ever seen anyone start him. Like, yeah. They have him, but you can't trust him enough to leave him in your starting lineup. Yeah. So when he does blow up, it's usually on somebody's bench. Yeah. And maybe this year, because of the way tight ends are, you could play him a little bit more often, but it's still a big risk. Yeah. So it, it's crazy. Um, he's been doing it for so long, too. Um, let's look at the waiver wire real quick. I haven't even looked at it myself, so this is a good uh, <laughs> test. Um, tons of quarterbacks, as always, of course. Um, I wouldn't be worried if you're in this league about quarterbacks. <laughs> but um, Baker Mayfield, if – if you're in a deeper league and he is still on the waiver wire, just pick him up. Baker Mayfield has been so good this year. Um, and I think in the correct matchups, he'll be great. It's kind of shocking, you know, in an eight-team league, 
to look at the quarterbacks that are on the bench. Geno Smith, who, you know, lost against the Lions, but put up monster points. Yeah. Mayfield, uh, Fields has been coming on strong. Mm -hmm. Uh, even Cousins is finding his footing. Like it's, it's shocking to see those quarterbacks still sitting on the waiver wire. Well, just wait till you see these wide receivers. (laughs) Uh, we got like Tank Dell, Rashid Shahid, Xavier Worthy. Maybe he fills in for Rice. Maybe that's a speculative speculative pick. I have a feeling somebody is going to uh, yeah. pick him up on waivers. I'm very tempted to put him for him. I don't think I'm going to get him because yeah. I'm up there in points. Yeah. But I would say, um, uh, Sammy, go for Xavier Worthy. Although all these guys are kind of the same deal. Tank Dell, Rashid Shahid, Xavier Worthy. They're like big play touchdown guys. Yeah. So it's a little bit risky, but Xavier Worthy might get a little uptick in in catches. The other thing I would watch out for, too, is that uh, Juju Smith-Schuster is still on uh, the Chiefs. Yeah. So maybe he gets a little uptick. Or, like I said, they might go out and trade for somebody. There's also rumors of Devontae Adams being He's on the trade block. Out. Yeah. So things to watch out for. But I would say the the best speculation for a wide receiver would probably be Xavier Worthy just because of the, the upside that he possesses on that offense. Mm-hmm. Um, then you got guys like Darnell Mooney. Um, Wandale Robinson has been a PPR fiend this season. He has. Uh, he had, what, 11 catches last <coughs> week? Yeah. 10 catches? Yeah, I had him on the bench in one 11. league. I started him in the ESPN league and uh, he scored some nice points. And he's averaging right around 10 points a game, which is which is great for you know a guy that you can just plug in as like your last flex position or something like that. Just to get consistent points, and he's benefiting from uh, from uh, Malik uh, Neighbors. Like, yeah. uh, he, I think uh, Neighbors is drawing, uh, you know, the best defender, and so uh, Wandale Robertson is 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 uh, benefiting from that. Yeah, uh, a couple tight ends. Um, we have David Njoku who might be coming back um, from injury. Uh, I thought I saw another one, but anyway, I think we skipped over running backs. Well, I was going to go back to them. Oh, but okay. I just, I thought I saw another tight end, so I was going to mention them real quick since they're short. Um, but running backs, I, again, I want to say Kareem Hunt, but I would still err with a little tiny bit of caution just because Clyde Edwards Hilaire is supposed to be coming back mm-hmm. from his uh, IR stint from PTSD. They like Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I don't know if he would slot in as the starter instead of Kareem Hunt right away, but that could get to be kind of an ugly backfield. We already saw Kareem Hunt jump Carson Steele. So now Kareem Hunt's the starter with P. Ryan being the backup. Carson Steele probably going to go back to fullback. But when Clyde gets back, are they going to make it even messier? I'm not sure. So Kareem Hunt could be a lot of upside if you want him, but just be aware that he could lose out that role at some point. It's so crazy that here's a guy who wasn't even in the league and he comes in because of injury and looked pretty good out there. Like, mm-hmm. why isn't he on another team? Why, how yeah. can the Chiefs just reach out, grab him from whatever it is he's doing, put him in the starting lineup, and he performs? I, yeah. I don't get that. Yeah, another guy, your guy actually, Austin Eckler, is out there. He's supposed to be back from his concussion, which is mm-hmm. it's unfortunate that he wasn't back this week because we saw – Jeremy McNichols, the backup commander's running back for that game, had two touchdowns. Yeah. Um, he so, might be a sneaky pickup. So maybe Austin Eckler um, will be back and be good. Um, there's also Rico Dottle. He might be slowly taking over for the Cowboys' backfield. Yeah. You know, I, I saw a video yesterday or today that uh, said that uh, Zeke is done. Zeke is done in this yeah. league and that uh, Dottle is going to claim that starting spot at some point. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he is Zeke, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, if you're looking for a number one back, uh, yeah. that might be a guy to uh, to add to your roster. So, yeah, uh, even though a lot of these guys that we're talking about, they got pretty tough matchups this week. Dowdle is facing Pittsburgh. Yeah, uh, uh, pretty tough defense there. So, yeah. Uh, so they're you know look at the defenses when you pick up a guy off the waiver wire if you need him to start immediately. Yeah, the other like kind of contingent pickup that you could make, uh, Josh Downs, the Colts receiver. Had eight catches and a touchdown, I believe. But he got most of his catches when Joe Flacco came into the game. So if Anthony Richardson is still out, Josh Downs might be way up the waiver wire slot for me personally. Um, But that's if Anthony Richardson doesn't play. So we won't know until Sunday. So it would be a late Mm -hmm. swap kind of pickup. But 
I don't know what to make of Richardson, and it's hard to trust any Colts receivers. You know, he. I thought he looked okay early on. You remember when uh, Alec Pierce had mm-hmm. like two touchdowns in week one? He had a touchdown in week two, and uh, but he's very inconsistent. And it's like, yeah. do you want to take a gamble on a Colts wide receiver? And then you know, Flack, Flack, oh, the, the veteran comes in and uh, makes uh, Pittman look good. You know, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to take any chances. I mean, I do have Pierce on my bench in a couple of leagues. Uh, but I'm afraid to start him because yeah. you don't know what you're going to get. Right. That's why I said right now it's most likely that receiving core is better if Flacco's playing. Yeah. Um, which is sad, but um, maybe give Anthony Richardson some more time to get going. Um, but right now he's he's definitely struggling. Mm. Um, I did want to mention a couple defenses that have good matchups. Denver, like I said, they've been playing really good defensively. He's gotten a lot of sacks. They're going to be up against Vegas this week. <laughs> And Devontae Adams might be out again because of his hamstring injury. Um, and they looked they looked bad this past week. Um, and then, of course, Seattle going up against the Giants. Now, Seattle is still banged up. That's why they got shredded by the Lions. Um, but anytime any team is going up against the Giants, they're probably a good streaming option. Um, and then, like we said, who would want New England's defense? But they're up against Miami. So maybe this is the time to take them. That is the game of the week. Yeah. Week spelled W E A K. That yeah. looks like that could be another low scoring game with mm-hmm. two good defenses going up against each other. Yeah. Another one I would suggest too is probably Minnesota at the Jets. Again, they're in London. There might be some jet lag for these teams. And Minnesota's defense has just been really good. And the Jets just haven't really gotten anything going on offense this week or these past couple weeks. So maybe that's another team that you can look at. Um, if you're streaming defenses, yeah. Um, any other waivers that you can think of at all, or uh, hit no, I think we hit them all. Uh, you know, like we've said the past couple of weeks on this podcast, that it's fun to stream defenses if you can get some good matchups. Yeah, you know, uh, like with Seattle, I think I started Seattle in one league last week and got some good points from them, but I was like, there's no way in hell I'm starting up against the Lions. And yeah. uh, the Lions <laughs> look like a Super Bowl yeah. contender against Seattle, which yeah. was shocking because Seattle has a pretty decent defense. Well, again, like I said, when I, I, I saw the injury report for Seattle, um, I think it was like early uh, Monday morning, and it was like all their entire defensive uh, line was out. They were missing some linebackers. Like I had a good idea that <laughs> things were not going to go well for Seattle defensively. Yeah. Which is crazy. Um, all right, let's get into these uh, week five matchups. As, like I said, we enter buys. So the projections might not be exactly correct because people haven't plugged in their players yet. But as it sits right now, surprise, surprise, Mr. 4 0 has the highest projected total. Well, like I kind of teased at the beginning of the podcast, Ian is in trouble in week <laughs> five. Uh, he's, you know, the, the buys are kicking in. Yeah. And with, Injuries combined with buys, uh, people are going to be hitting the waiver wire this week hard. Um, look at the projection for that game, 125 for the Blockbusters, 77 <laughs> because he has several open slots right yeah. now because of buys. Uh, he can't start Richardson as his quarterback, so he's going to have to try to find one on, on the waiver wire. Um, this could be an ugly, ugly game. Now, I don't want to jinx myself. Yeah. I've said that in the past where I'm like, Oh, it's like having a bye week. I'm not yeah. going to boast. I'm not going to brag. But according to the projections, uh, this could be a, a lopsided game next week because yeah. I don't think I'm affected by the bye weeks at all. Like, not mm. even my bench yeah. is affected. Oh, wait, there is a who has a no game. Uh, Dobbins yeah. is off. He's on my bench. But, uh, yeah, he's uh, Ian's going to be missing his quarterback. St. Brown and yeah, his any two, Lions players. His two biggest picks, Saquon Barkley and Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah, and St. Brown was the number one pick in the Yeah, draft, you get to so. avoid the number one running back in the entire league. Yeah, <laughs> so I am I I dodge a bullet this week, uh, mm-hmm. not having to face St. Brown and Barkley, uh, and uh, Ian hitting the waiver wire for a QB. So, yeah, he's probably going to uh, need a running probably. back because I would not want to start Zamir White against Denver at all, and he yeah. has no other running backs. Um for Saquon Barkley, so might be getting a uh, running back and a quarterback potentially, but um, yeah, it's not looking good for him going into the week. So yeah, 
but I'm rooting for him because we can't have somebody <laughs> go undefeated for too long. Just like Tracy last year. What did she start? Six and zero? Oh? Something like that. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, and this is definitely. I think this is my best start in yeah. the Owen TV league. So at some point, we got to stop you. Yeah. Um, the next highest matchup at the moment is Sammy and Marie, and crazily enough, Sammy is projected to win. Let's really? hope he can get a win. Let's take a look. Uh, why? So what's going on here? First of all, let's look at. So Jacobs has a high uh, projection. Um, at the <coughs> moment, Marie has Singletary in over Pittman. Um, that might change, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, maybe she plays Keenan Allen. I don't usually know how she decides to play her players, if she goes off projections or what. I know that basically with Devin Singletary, every time she's played him, he's had a not-so-great week, and every time she doesn't play him, he has a good week. So we'll see there. Yeah, neither team is affected heavily by buys. Um, yeah. I think Sammy, though, he's getting – we don't know about Jonathan Taylor's status. He right. might miss this game. And then A-Chan having 15.6 points is a pretty high projection after the way that he's played recently. Yeah, especially against New England. So I don't know if Yahoo adjusts their projections at all during the year, but right now it's, it's not looking that great. Yeah. Um, so if A-Chan can have a normal good game, then I think Sammy has a chance. Yeah. But, yeah, it'll, it'll be close. And, um, yeah, I think that's I, – I don't – I still think he needs to figure out the waiver wire maybe a little bit, maybe keep trying for trades, but those wide receivers are just – they're hard to trust, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Then we have me and Becky playing against each other. I get to dodge Jalen Hurts, but that means she's just going to plug in Jordan Love. She is without David Montgomery, which is going to be nice for me. Um, I'm without without Jameer Gibbs, but I've already slotted him out and put Aaron Jones up to the starting running back slot and put Brian Thomas into my flex position. Um, I'll have to wait and see if Devontae Adams is going to be healthy or not. Neighbors is in concussion protocol. and Yep. You know, when when a player's in concussion protocol, you think, oh, you know, they have a week. They should be back. But if you look at McBride, yeah. he went into concussion protocol and missed week yeah. four. It's typical so that know. it tends to be that they're usually going to miss a week, mm. um, typically if they're in concussion protocol. So that's not looking good. Bijan, like I said, still has that little nagging shoulder injury. Um, and then it just seems like so many guys on my team have questionable tags or out. And with the buys, I might be in trouble if some – if if two of these guys get hurt, I'm going to have to make some unfortunate drops on my team um, because of it. So kind of have to wait and see. Like, I might have to drop Ramondre Stevenson um, to pick somebody up. Sadly enough, might have to drop Tony Pollard in a pinch if Ooh. something crazy happens. What are you going to do about your Andrews situation? I don't see a backup tight end. On um, still deciding. I, I think I'm going to drop him. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to drop him. Um, but again, I have to look at that tight end market. If David and is coming back, maybe I'll try to put in a bid for him. Mm. Um, there's a couple other options that I can think of that I, I won't share just in case somebody <laughs> wants to be that way. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm glad that I get to dodge David Montgomery. Um, cause he's been insane. Um, uh, not sure if Trey McBride's going to be back or not. He probably will be, he should be most likely. And then, um, Becky's got another decision to does she slot in Deontay Johnson into her starting lineup? He's been really good lately. Um, so that would up her um, projections. This will probably be a, a close projection by the time Becky sets her lineup. Mm. And then finally, we got Malik taking on Tracy. And Tracy projected to win at the moment. Uh, Malik's got Jamison Williams out on bye. So who would he oh, replace yeah. with? Puka Nakua is still injured. Raheem Mostert is still injured. So maybe he goes to like Keon Coleman. Maybe, excuse me, maybe hits the waiver wire. Um, Tracy without Sam Laporta or Jake Bates. So she's going to, she have to pick up a kicker? Yeah, she's going to have to pick up a kicker, which I would just drop Jake Bates. The lines don't kick enough. It's not worth it to keep him on your team. Yeah, nobody's going to jump after him on the waiver wire if you want him back at some point. Yeah. Unfortunately, she has to slot in Kyle Pitts into her lineup, and he's just been abysmal. Yeah. Once again, I'm glad that he's been my player that's been dead to me. Um, 
But, I mean, it's it's sad to see. Maybe Joe Mixon will be back this week. It's possible. They're so, talking about it. Yeah. So that might help her team out a bit. Um, unfortunately, like I said, Rice, wait and see. But I'm thinking he's out for the season. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I have him in another league, and I hope that's not the case because the, the team I have in the other league has just been devastated. You know, I lose Pacheco early on. Mm-hmm. I lose Cup early on, and then I lose Rice. It's like you're not going to win this league if it's three of the top draft picks are all done for the season. Yeah. Coop, I, you know, they're they're saying he's out for five, week five, but – it sounds like he might be getting closer to play. So yeah. those of you who've had Cooper, you know, it's it's frustrating that they didn't put him on IR because you can't put him on IR, so he has to sit on your bench. Yeah. But I'm I'm sure hoping that Cooper Cup owners, and you are one of them, yeah. uh, will get him back soon. Yeah, it'll be interesting because there, there's going to be a few players like that. We should see Cooper Cup hopefully somewhat soon. Puka Nakua should also be somewhat close. Um, we just saw Debo Samuel and George Kittle come back. Christian McCaffrey might be out for a while longer even still, which is scary. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the main guys that were injured early, we might start seeing them come back. So hopefully that'll be uh, more exciting. Uh, A.J. Brown as well, like I was saying. So, yeah, hopefully we start getting some guys healthy and can see some of these star players because that's that's what the league thrives on, of course. So Right, right. And and, and it's, it's just been weird. This has been kind of the story of, this season are just the marquee names going down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll see. But good luck for everybody in week five as we start the buys. Um, and it's only going to keep going. We have buys in week five and week six. Um, I can't remember if there's any in seven. There's a couple of weeks there's not anymore. And yeah. then there's some big ones towards the end of the season again. Oh, gosh, yeah. Where there's 12, like week 12 and week Ooh. 14 are really bad. And I that's when you're pushing wins. for the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I said it's, it's kind of important to get those early wins um, because it gets, it gets scary towards the end of the year when you have makeshift teams, basically. Um, so keep making those waiver wire moves. Sammy, keep sending people trades. Just annoy people with trades. That's what... I like to do sometimes it's the, you know, the art of the deal, you know, in, in my other league, uh, I'm, I was panicking because I was, uh, so I've been, I drafted Ford in several leagues and, and, uh, knowing that, uh, that, uh, uh, the, Nick Chubb. Uh, Chubb will be coming back and apparently he's practicing this week. And so I kind of panicked because I'm, I've been starting Ford and if Chubb comes in and takes that starting spot away from, uh, Ford, Uh, I only have one starting running back on my roster and I panicked. And so I, uh, it was, it was kind of fun. So I proposed a trade, uh, she didn't counter, but we were kind of texting back and forth. Mm -hmm. I, I deleted that trade offer, came up with another one and we were negotiating back and forth. And, uh, I ended up giving away a player. I really like a lot Godwin, but I Mm -hmm. needed to shore up my running back. So, you know, the art of the deal of, of negotiating and wheeling and dealing and you both teams want to come away. Like they've improved their team. So Mm -hmm. you have to make concessions if you need to improve your team. Yeah. And sometimes you have to take, take a little bit of a risk. I took, when I made my trade last week, I got Travis Etienne, Debo Samuel and Travis Kelsey. All three of those players are notoriously very good players, yeah. but they are struggling heavily this season. And I gave up a farm system of players <laughs> to get them. And so far, it's been a pretty even trade, even though maybe on paper you're like, that doesn't look as even as it is, even though I gave up more players. But looking at the results after this week, it was a pretty even trade. So sometimes you just have to take risks. Yeah. And even if you don't feel like, you're winning the trade even sometimes you go with that upside of especially like guys like sammy and things if you're down to one and three oh and four sometimes you just have to bank on hey maybe this guy will get right and you go after the guy that's struggling right now and maybe they'll turn it around and then they can turn your season around right that's what it's all about And, and you know that kind of activity just makes fantasy football fun yeah so make those deals pick up those players and good luck in week five we'll see you guys next week